Hello everyone, welcome to the short tutorial on power amplifier architectural trends for 5G communication systems. In this tutorial, we will go into the architectures of power amplifiers only and in later videos, we will go into more detail with respect to the technologies used and the individual characteristics of amplifiers. So in this tutorial, we will be briefly discussing every architecture which are very hotly pursued with respect to 5G communication systems. So if you have any questions, please mention it in the comment section and also read the description. We keep it updated if there is some changes out there. Also visit our website www.poweramplifier.net for more interesting uh, topics in wireless communications and technology. I assume that everybody of you who are watching this video have some background in analog RF design, also some basic telecommunication theory as we will be discussing those in the later in this tutorial. So these are the trends which we see in the peer research papers as reported from 2005 to 2017. One clear trend we can see is the Doherty RFP and envelope tracking shown in these blue and red lines are clearly rising and this is very obvious because they offer very high efficiency and they offer very high bandwidth and as we can see the the bandwidth and efficiency are very very important criteria when it comes to 5G communication system. Also we can see that the distributed is also gaining traction, it's, the numbers are rising. The traveling wave RFPA, it's somewhat decreasing now because there's this high complexity involved but it offers very high bandwidth and gain as well. Link RFPA is decreasing in its importance as well as uh, envelope elimination and restoration. We will discuss all those topologies in the coming uh, part of this lecture. So let's get started with every one of these one by one first we will start with distributed and traveling wave rfp and then we go to dorothy envelope tracking eer and uh, link rfpa the first amplifier which we will talk about for 5g wireless communication system is the distributed amplifier the distributed amplifier consists of n number of transistors for example assume we have three transistors q1 q2 and q3 on the top of those transistors the drain lines are connected with different sections of transmission lines these transmission lines are also connected at the bottom with the gate lines as well. So we have L or the transmission line sections on the top and the transmission line sections on the bottom. As we note that the transmission line model is an LC, 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 L sort of circuit. So the C is provided by the equivalent parasitic capacitance of those transistors. In other words, we are able to establish a artificial transmission line using transmission line sections along with the transistors. Now how the transistors and the distributed amplification works is that at the bottom we feed the input at the gate of the amplifier and at the top we get the output at the drain line. And now what happens is as we can see in the figure half of the output will move to the right and half to the left which is the ZD is the termination resistance which is usually equal to 50 ohms. Problem is we want that as much power as possible goes on the right but this is not possible and this is one of the major limitation of distributed amplifier that we have a little bit lower efficiency and this is hotly pursued topic as well. In any case when the power goes to the right from the bottom the transistor Q2 also generates the, uh, it also generates the output voltage or the output power. So the main thing in this distributed amplification is that the phase delay between q1 and q2 output voltage waves is made such that they add in phase with each other and this in phase keeps on adding 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 and we get more and more output power so in other words what happens in distributed amplifier we have not the, the multiplication of gains is rather than the addition of gains right so all the power is keep on adding in the distributed amplification manner so one of the biggest thing in distributed amplifier it's a little bit efficiency is quite low but despite this as i said earlier it's hardly pursued for as an amplifier for 5g communication systems one question which might come into one mind is what happens if we keep on doubling or increasing the sizes of the transistor yes of course the gain will double but again the bandwidth will have the reason the gain will double and the bandwidth will have because the c uh, the the equivalent capacitance is not directly half because there is a l section between the tra transistors as well so this is one of the very important property of distributed amplifier there is also another amplifier which we'll just discuss is the traveling wave power amplifier which is a little bit more advanced version of distributed amplifier it is very very also hotly pursued as we mentioned earlier and now we will discuss that amplifier the second amplifier which we will talk about is the traveling wave power amplifier it is also known as continuous distributed amplifier it is a very important amplifier and it is gaining a lot of attention as we saw earlier 
It is a form of a distributed amplifier, but there is one major difference. As in distributed amplifier, we saw that we have distributed sections of transmission line in its equivalent model. But here, there is a continuous section on the top and a continuous section on the bottom at the gate lines and at the top at the drain line I meant. So what happens in uh, traveling wake distributed amplifier, we get very high bandwidth, high gain, but the only biggest challenge is stability. So if it's stabilized properly, it is much, much better than a distributed amplifier. So the traveling wave amplifier Another very important thing before I go into detail of traveling wave amplifier is very challenging to implement and if it's implemented correctly it's one of the very very good amplifier in terms of bandwidth high gain one can get out of modern technologies available. So I will only discuss the first schematic here to an extent because it's a complicated structure and needs another full tutorial to explain in more detail. So what happens is there are two lines one at the top one at the bottom. The overall principle is very similar to distributed amplifier in terms of amplification but the major difference here is that the two lines form a coupled uh, transmission line so when we have two coupled transmission lines it has even mode impedance and odd mode impedance so in traveling with power amplifier the odd mode impedance is the more important as compared to the even mode and this odd mode impedance is when the, the length of the line is significantly long then what happens it results in negative resistance and when we solve the gain equation it can give exponential gain and this is one of the major powerful thing of the traveling wave power amplifier that it is able to give very very high gain and at without the cost without the cost of degrading of bandwidth so in terms of the circuit design when we talk about this negative resistance what happens is that the drain source drain current of the transistor are out of phase with the drain source voltage and this creates the negative resistance when it is solved I, of course uh, the solution is not given here in this slide but when it is solved it gives very high gain so that is one of the major motivation of using this traveling wave power amplifier it is uh, very robust again it has one major challenge that uh, the stability is very very tough in this uh, one important thing about distributed amplifier and traveling wave amplifier these uh, amplifiers uh, one another very important criteria to be managed in those amplifiers is the gain flatness so the gain flatness it is also a very important parameter uh, to tackle when we talk about uh, these uh, distributed amplifiers but efficiency wise traveling wave amplifier is much better than a distributed amplifier which is a traditional distributed amplifier The next amplifier configuration which we will talk about is the Doherty amplifier. It's a very old amplifier. It was invented in 1936 and the principle is well known. The principle is that it has two amplifier. One is the main amplifier, other is the auxiliary amplifier and they are connected in such a way that the end result is that the back of efficiency is enhanced. And back of efficiency is important because in modern communication system the signals have very high peak to average power ratio and I have discussed in another video in detail what is peak to average power ratio but the point is with high peak to average power ratio we need very high back of efficiency and the back of efficiency is given by Doherty in a very amazing way and this has been extensively used in base stations and for 5G system they have been explored at 28 gigahertz 60 gigahertz sub 6 gigahertz 5G and in many configuration in, in many frequencies and many technologies so Doherty is also a very hot topic uh, in terms of 5G communication amplifiers the next is the envelope tracking I have a whole series of videos on envelope tracking the, and the principle of envelope tracking is also the back of efficiency enhancement and it is much uh, it is better in a Doherty in a way that it tackles for high bandwidth also Doherty has traditionally low bandwidth but Doherty has also been explored in ways to enhance its bandwidth in envelope tracking what we do is the supply is modulated with the envelope of the input RF signal and in this way output supply tracks the input voltage and in this efficiency enhanced so here you can see the losses in a traditional amplifier where the red region is without envelope tracking and with envelope tracking we are able to get high efficiency and Envelope trackers are very suitable for uh, sub 6 GHz 5G and they have been extensively explored right now and they are also appearing in products as well for example in Qualcomm uh, RF360 chip. Now I would like to talk about envelope elimination and restoration. Uh, as we saw in the envelope tracking what we did was the drain of the amplifier was modulated by our envelope of the signal. What we do in envelope in elimination and restoration EER we do the same as in ET but at the gate of the amplifier rather than feeding the original signal we feed the constant amplitude phase modulated signal like what we do is we take out the phase modulated signal out of the main signal which has a constant amplitude and we amplified with the switching mode power amplifier which is highly efficient and again we restored the same uh, the original signal 
amplified version of the original signal at the load resistance RL. So in other words, we split the signal into R and theta at the input. We uh, do the feed the R into the supply and we feed the phase modulated constant amplitude signal to the switching mode power amplifier and then we restore it. Therefore, it is known as envelope elimination and restoration. The next topology which we'll be talking about is the link or linear amplification using non-linear component. It is a more advanced form of the EER one can say what we do is we have a signal component separator it splits signal both into phase modulated constant envelope signals and both of them are then amplified with the switching mode power amplifier and then there is a combiner at the end which is known as the Schrae combiner usually and this combiner is then used to combine the signal and we get the amplified version of the signal. Link is a very challenging topology it also suffers from the mismatch and delays but it offers very high bandwidth as well so it is a very highly explored topology as well. Well, so one can think of ET, EER and LING into one category of amplifiers in which we do some sort of separation and then combination of the signal. So these three topologies can be coupled into one category, into one logical category one can think of its own. So that's all for this tutorial but one thing I would say these are not all the topology there are many more topologies reported in literature and over the course of time we will be discussing those in our lectures. If you like the lecture please hit the like button also subscribe to the channel and any questions you have please mention in the comment section and read the description if there are any update. Also don't forget to visit our website www.poweramplifier.net. Thank you very much.